Uh, hopefully this is recording properly just because uh, OBS is acting kind of weird. Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, we're, we're here at this uh, these two banners uh, for the anniversary and whatnot. I already got the tickets and everything, so I guess I could talk about them a little bit. Uh, the Hero Fest, I think, is pretty bad. Um, I guess long gone are the days of like a decent Hero Fest where you can kind of, you know, plus 10 something that you really felt like that would have been very useful, right, to, to some degree. Um, so this is all right, but she's just a really bad unit now. Um, she's very outstatted by a lot of people, and uh, yeah, she doesn't really offer a whole lot, so that's that. Um, and then, yeah, this time I'm just going to kind of go through the intros to everything. So this guy, uh, I mean, I guess you could plus 10 him if that's what you wanted. Um, don't really care too much about him, though. The only thing he has to me is... Uh, a little attack defense. Um, the Heavy Blade 4 is useful, but there's not a whole lot of people I would use this on. Uh, the only person I would use it on would be... Uh, what's her name? Uh, I'm drawing a blank here. Pal Young Pala, but uh, problematically... Um, she's going to get Dive Bomb anyway, so she'll get a Heavy Blade eventually, but... You know, so... There's, really no, there's no reason to give that to her, and I don't really have anyone else to give it to, so I'll have to think about that if I pull him. Um, but that's that. Uh, her, I like her. She has a very kind of Jill thing kind of going on, and she's actually one of the stronger green archers out there. Like, she can just, like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I've ever survived a uh, Shamir with Brave Hector, um, and that's something to consider. Um, yeah, she's uh, she does a lot of damage if you're not careful. Like, if you're doing Tempest Trials or just some kind of PvE, you know, you're just, you're, oh, I'm just going to Brave Hector this and then... Um, leave it alone, uh, she oftentimes just comes in and just shatters him. Um, so that's pretty interesting to think that, you know, there's a unit out there that makes Brave Hector look like a piece of paper. Um, in terms of fodder, I mean, I probably wouldn't use her still. She would just kind of sit in my barracks because I don't really have a whole lot of use for just standalone one-shot units. But, um, yeah, she's all right. Uh, she's got Moonbow. Uh, fodder, she's got attack speed 4 plus the null follow-up, which is pretty good. So you can inherit both of these in one go. Uh, or if you wanted the attack speed plus four and then the uh, rouse attack speed, that's you know that's another way to go. But um, you know you can't inherit all of these again without like two copies of her, and I, hopefully I don't pull two copies of her. Uh, and then lastly, we've got the Shinon, which for those of you who know this channel, uh, Shinon is a is a sort of wellspring of um, a fodder. But you know now that I've got Norn, I took all his fodder and gave it to Norn. Um, basically everyone who's gonna get anyone who's gonna get uh, stuff from him is basically gonna get it suboptimally um, because there's really no reason to like I don't have any other unit that can inherit all of the skills he has or would even want all the skills that he has so uh, going forward it's you know, he's gonna be kind of like uh, I'm basically foddering him off at a loss is basically the best way I can put it um, that being said however uh, his low attack speed 3 is something I do need for um, uh, Patrine, so you know if I get him, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, I do need that um, And then I can just give her this and this and you know, we can work from there uh, If I get multiples, I guess I, I mean, I don't think I will that'd be a lot of luck there But I mean I uh, did ice pretty good on, on other bow units, but you know, like I said, I don't know if we'll get more than one um, But Yeah, so that, that's pretty much it for this banner. Uh, it's, it's just not that good um, You know, hopefully we either get one of these or uh, one of the new uh, four star special four star rate I think has to do with the uh, like you'll get them as four star and then they'll just kind of randomly boost themselves up to five star not randomly but like you know that's kind of they're supposed to do that um, let's go see because I mean brave Hector should be in there I think from what I saw let's see if we can look here uh, da -da -da. I don't know uh, Hector brave warriors under four star so if we can slide up here quickly just to prove it so special four star a lot of these are five stars that like you can pull them at four star rates and they just like turn into five stars uh, which is pretty cool uh which basically means you have five five or five eight and uh, eleven so you have eleven percent chance of pulling uh, a five star so that's pretty cool uh, i'm not sure if uh, every banner now is going to come with that yeah four star focus here and then there's the four star uh special rate so that's pretty interesting uh i guess let's move over to to this here there's only red or green, so you kind of have to choose one or the other. Uh, personally, I'm choosing uh, red just because, for one, I don't really care about this guy or his fodder. I don't really care about Crafty uh, crafty Fighter. 
I don't care about people, you know, a lot of people kind of like this one, but a lot of people are obviously going for the one on Henriette, which I think is the better choice. Um, but I don't really care too much about this skill. Uh, this skill is obviously not that big a deal. Um, so yeah, no, there's nothing here that's really worth pulling for on him. And uh, you can kind of, I mean, if you wanted a plus 10 this unit, then, I mean, here it is, a 4-star focus, but I really don't care either. Uh, the defense res form is pretty good, but uh, other than that, it's like, whatever. Um, but yeah, so basically... What this comes down to is I, I kind of want him, uh, well, them, uh, just because they look all right. I mean, they look kind of fun to use, but I'm, I might fire them off. It's going to be a huge, like, a long time for me to sit there and kind of think about what I want to do with them. Um, because mainly I want this for Kranya, because uh, Kranya with this is going to be kind of, like, uh, pretty good. I mean, her, her biggest weakness, and a lot of times you can't bring her into certain maps because you can't snipe the healing tower. But now the healing tower is no, not even an issue because you basically sit there, wait till bolt tower hits them, run in there. Uh, hit him with Kranya and reduce him by another 7, and then now everyone in range uh, won't be able to heal whether the healing tower is there or not. Um, so basically just, you know, like I said, it makes that easier. Um, though, the reason it's like... I'm not sure if I'm, I'm going to spend orbs to pull for this, because uh, it's 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 going to be hard to choose between Fatal Smoke and Pulse Smoke, because both of them are equally as powerful. Um, there are some teams where just running a Pulse Smoke beats the whole team. Like, the whole team falls apart because of Pulse Smoke. And likewise, there are teams that just fall apart uh, to uh, Fatal Smoke. However, I think seeing as I have uh, Felicia, for those of you who know, my Felicia is my CC Vantage dagger, um, dagger unit on Astra. Since I have her and she has Pulse Smoke, I think I can just do that. So if, if I ever need Pulse Smoke, for sure, I'll just run Felicia. Uh, and then if I ever, like, you know, if I look at the map and I don't, Pulse Smoke isn't that big an issue, then I can run Kranya and then have her just sweep everybody and not have to worry about it so much. So I might just end up sticking with this on her. Um, yeah, so that's that. The only other unit here is, of course, her, uh, which is... <laughs> it's actually, I mean, she's in, this skill is pretty good, but I don't think I'm going to fodder her off. Uh, I just like Henriette, and I, you know, hopefully I can just you know pull her and just have her there. It should be nice to have. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I mean, there's not a whole lot else. Uh, Slick Fighter... Just, uh, this one's pretty good because it uh, neutralizes penalties and uh, and she makes a follow-up attack. Now, is it better than something like Vengeful Fighter? I'm not entirely sure. Um, the lack of not having to worry about penalties is pretty good, but Vengeful Fighter just helps you secure kills because you can charge your special. Uh, it's just kind of a preference thing. So we're going to pull on this banner here first. Uh, there's nothing else here. Um, but yeah, I guess in terms of talking about... Uh, let's see, what are we pulling? We're pulling for colorless more than anything. So let's just pull on colorless. Uh, what else? I mean, I guess green would be pretty good. Blue, obviously you want to pull blue for more um, Brave Hectors, but, uh, you know, I doubt we'll, uh, we'll be so lucky. Um, uh, so yeah, I guess I can kind of talk a little bit about the, um, the fourth anniversary or whatever. I think it's all right. Um, I know, for those of you who watch Tacho, green or red? I think there's nothing on red except Sothis, and then blue has that guy, which would be fine. Green has her. I guess I'm just gonna pull blue here. Um, yeah, I know Tacho complained about it quite a bit, and I'm not entirely sure if I mentioned anything in my videos. I can't remember now. Um, but yeah, I think it's like, and, and, and he made a video recently, just kind of saying, you know, it wasn't as bad as, as he originally thought. I think one of the things that we have to remember is that when they, when, when that first time came around and they gave us 50 orbs. There wasn't much, hey look there's Felicia, there wasn't a whole lot in the game for them to give us, right? There wasn't dragon flowers, there wasn't um, dragon fruit or whatever, mangoes, whatever those mangoes are called, I forgot. Uh, there wasn't, uh, what else? There wasn't, yeah, there wasn't dragon flowers, there wasn't those mangoes, there wasn't uh, heroic grails. Uh, there just wasn't a whole lot to give us, so they just gave us straight up 50 orbs. Um, yeah, so I think the fact that like... And they gave us quite a bit of orbs anyways. They gave us like 20-something orbs, or I don't know, at least half. But the the other currencies that they gave us in addition to that, I think more than make up for the fact that we didn't get all uh, you know, all those 50 orbs that we got last time. Um, I don't know, personally, maybe I'm just an apologist or something like that. Um, though, I, <laughs> oh look, here's a, here's a uh, Shinin. That's pretty cool. Um, I needed the attack defense or attack speed um, fodder, so that's pretty cool. Um, also, I had fought it off both of them last time, and we got our hero merit uh, boosted to more, I think 7,000 now. Uh, so I can just use them to farm that last 1,000 and then fodder him off again. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, let's stop for now. Uh, I think from going forward, I might just want to pull... 
yeah, I wanted Shinnin, but there wasn't like a whole lot else. Because I mean, he already got his attack speed fodder, which is what I needed. Uh, I might pull hers, I guess. I kind of like her, and I did. I do need green units, so that's pretty good. Yeah, I'll probably just pull on that. Not that I'm gonna get her, uh, her or anything else on on green anyway. Well, there's a lot of green. Um, but yeah, I think the the, the the point I just wanted to make was we have a lot more that they can give us now, and I think the fact that they gave us you know dragon flowers, which are very valuable, and 44 is no joke. Um, they gave us a bunch of, of of grails, not only just like free grails in general, like through like little small missions, but also in the uh, tempest trials right now. Like there's a lot of grails in there. Um, so yeah, I think the fact that they have a lot more to like disperse, uh, I think makes up for it uh, in spades almost. So that's kind of that's kind of my feelings towards it. Uh, you know, you guys can all feel the way you want to feel about it, especially and and I kind of like this system a little more because when they gave us those fifty orbs, it wasn't really like you couldn't celebrate, right? Like like if I got fifty orbs now, I wouldn't be like, oh yeah, fifty orbs, and I felt like we're celebrating, right? I would get those fifty orbs. And you know what I would do with them? I would just stash them and then save them and then <laughs> go on with my life, right? And I think a lot of us, a lot of us players, um, we kind of think the same way. For those of us who are more um, competitively oriented, right? Like, you get fifty orbs and you just save them. But the fact that they're giving us tickets means that like you can't use these tickets on anything. So just spend them, and then we get to have a little fun. You know, I mean, I think we all think it's fun to to summon, uh, especially when it's free like this. Like these are fun to summon when you're when you're burning, you know, your hard earned orbs and then not getting anything. I mean, that that always usually hurts a lot. Uh, but when when you get when you're given tickets, everything you get out of them is free. You're just sitting there, you know, summoning away just for the sake of it. Um, and I think that's a lot more fun for 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 just everybody in general, right? So that's kind of the way I I see it. Uh, I'm kind of grateful that they went uh, this way rather than you know just here's a here's a lump sum of orbs and then move on with your life. Um, but yeah, so uh, looks like all we got was Shinnin from here. Um, it's not too bad. Uh, I didn't expect very much from this, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I am kind of sad that I'm not like too big a fan of Shinnin. Like if I was a fan of Shinnin, man, I'd have like a plus 10 Shinnin. He'd be my light, my light, um, light season, you know, CC vantage user. Cause I mean, for one, he's already got CC vent, uh, CC in this plus five to all stats plus cooldown reduction. Um, and I mean, you can run dead eye, but you could probably run like something, you know, better, like a, uh, I don't know, like a noon time or maybe some healing if you want, whatever, whatever you want to run, you can run here. Uh, and then here again, you could just run this if you want, or run anything else here. Um, you can. Uh, I have my um, my Norn on attack, low attack defense, a uh, low attack speed. Uh, but you know, you might be able to run special spiral or just like anything you want. Like he's just such a good unit for for uh, for you know CC vantaging uh, with as a bow user. But um, you know, it's up to you. You know, you have to get the plus ten on him, in which you know it's not entirely easy. Though the reason I pointed out is like I'm saying. Um, I would have had a plus three already, uh, Shinin, or plus two Shinin, and, you know, maybe this Hero Fest banner comes out and I save some orbs and maybe I can get, like, up to a plus six or something like that, and that'd be, even that's pretty, like, monstrous to deal with, because, for one, um, he's got pretty decent stats, but the fact that his bow gives him, like, five to everything, and then you can run whatever, uh, A slot passive you want, you're not, like, locked to close counter, like, it's pretty dumb, like, there's not a whole lot else to say about that, um, but yeah, so... If you're a fan of Shinnin, I think this is the time to pull for him. I think out of all these units, Shinnin's probably the better one. Um, now, granted, Sothis isn't too bad because having more merges um, on your defense mythic is pretty good. However, um, you're, at that point, you're kind of playing to lose because she doesn't offer a whole lot on, on defense. Like, she's not very strong. Um, there are not a whole lot of units that get cut out by her. Like, I run I run Norn, right? And, like, Norn has uh, close foil. And even then, like, I see, a, I see a Sothis on their team and I just, like... I'm not bothered by it. Like I can't counterattack Sothis and kill her, but I can basically just take all the damage she's going to dish out because she's not going to dish out very much damage anyway, right? Uh, so that's kind of the, the the main point about that is that uh, Sothis isn't very like she's not strong enough. Um, yeah, so it is what it is. Uh, so here's kind of like the conundrum of like, should I spend orbs on this banner? There's no spark here. Yeah, there's no spark, which kind of sucks, but. Uh, we're probably it's gonna be quite a while before we get fatal smoke though i guess okay so i guess the the, the, the saving grace here is the idea that um she this, these two are probably gonna come back on a, like a duo banner uh, or something like that some kind of special banner so i think that would be the optimal time to pull for them um and you know in conjunction with this you know some and some other dual hero of course if uh Byleth comes out on there i mean i'm kind of screwed because uh i already have a i already have a plus 10 Byleth, so i don't need any more um 
But yeah, I think the the bigger issue is I'm probably never gonna get a chance to get um, Henry yet, even though. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm probably never gonna get a chance to, to 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 pull her other than outside of this banner and then waiting for this banner to come back at some point. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll summon because the, the reason I'm kind of debating this more is so is because uh, on this banner I wasn't gonna spend any at all, and I was we had ten tickets, right? The problem with this banner is we have five tickets, and I have to make the decision before I go in whether I want to summon, you know, spend orbs, right? So it's like we go in with a ticket for free, and then we summon in there, and those are reduced costs because you're only hitting fours uh, and threes after the first summon, right? Uh, so I have to decide whether I want to spend orbs or not, and I think I'm just gonna have to go with no. So we're just gonna get in here and summon all these red, uh, red orbs. Uh, I almost got excited there for a second. So we got Sophia. I wanted to build a Sophia, but she's really not that good, even with her resplendent alt. Um, stop. Uh, so hopefully we can, uh, hopefully we can get something. But uh, we already got Shin in earlier, so not too shabby there. Uh, we can pull, I don't know what to pull here. Um, I don't like any of the green units and, uh, hmm. Blue, what's in blue? Well, there's a chance to get a Vector in blue, which, I mean, that's always pretty cool. Uh, there's also chances to get Veronica here, but, uh, we'll just, uh, we'll just pull for blue. We'll see what happens. Come on, Vector. Uh, we didn't get anything. Oh, uh, we haven't actually pulled any of the, um, the new special, like, four stars or whatever they are. Uh, let's go in there. Ooh, pretty cool. Oh, we got Bantu. It feels like they're slightly laggier than normal, so, like, I get baited into thinking we got something. Um, yeah, let's see. In other news, um, I forgot what his name is. I think it's Zhao or something. The new character in Genshin looks pretty sick. Uh, we got whoever this is. I guess I've never pulled one of her before. <laughs> uh, let's see, what does she do? Yeah, I've never pulled her. That's kind of interesting. Oh, yeah, that's why. It's because I haven't pulled in red in, like, who knows how long. Um, uh, plus speed, what does she have? Yeah, I haven't pulled it on red in, like, forever. Um, just because there's no more red units I need. Uh, speed res gap isn't too bad. Um, it's good supportive. Uh, C, uh, yeah, C skill or whatever, but it's it's whatever. Uh, but yeah, that new character looks pretty awesome. He's got his own devil trigger, which basically is what <laughs> is the main reason I'm uh, interested in him. Um, so I've been grinding that out and trying to get um, as many free-to-play crystals as possible. Um, and here's a uh, here's a Krom. Krom is pretty good. Oh, and he's not that good, but he's he's alright because he's got aether fodder that I'm willing to uh, fodder him off for. Um, he doesn't have anything else though, and he he also costs twenty thousand feathers to get that aether fodder. Uh, let's stop. So we only have one ticket left, I think. Yep, here we are. So hopefully we get something here, but if not, I mean, no worries. Hey, we got Byleth. That's pretty crazy. That's two ruptured skies now, which is pretty interesting. Um, I just now just got to figure out who to use this on, because uh, you want to inherit ruptured sky and distant counter, because that's what he's got. Uh, I got a plus speed one. That's pretty cool. If I liked male Byleth, I would have, uh, I can merge him up and have a plus speed Byleth. Um, but yeah, so basically you want to inherit Rupture Sky and Distant Counter, because, uh, why not? Can't really take anything else. I mean, I guess you could take the first two levels of chill speed and then have someone else give them the three, but then you're just being suboptimal. Um, on that other unit anyway. Uh, or I guess you could take, uh, you could take one, two, three from him and then take the Distant Counter, that's four. If they don't already have the Dragon Fang, if they don't have the Dragon, um, whatever's. That's pretty cool. So there you go. Um, got kind of lucky here. Um, not as lucky as I'd like to be, but uh, you can't really complain with these odds. Um, I guess the question is, what am I saving for with these orbs? Um, mainly, like I said, we, we still have a few things we need to upgrade on in terms of defense. So we, we still need the dive bomb from the um, pirate to barn, as well as uh, wyvern, uh, wyvern Flight and uh, what's the other one? Wyvern Flight and Pegasus Flight. Uh, so those are two skills I have to be pulling for. Um, outside of that, there's not a whole lot else, but uh, it's good to have you know orbs in reserve as, as well as uh, what I what I want to do. I think is uh, one of my next. Oh, actually, one of the next banners that's coming. I'm not going to pull on it, mind you, but uh, one of the next banners that's coming will be the new um, the Ike and Fjorm banner, the new and improved uh, Ike and Fjorm. Which uh, for those of you who who uh, have a decently built Fjorm. Mine's not decently built. Uh, she's just kind of 
is built. <laughs> um, it's just that I have a plus three Fjorm. Uh, I'm kind of tempted to pull on that banner because like Fjorm got some serious upgrades. For one, she's got this, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's not like the biggest thing. A lot of people were running, um, what's that skill? Uh, you know what it is, the uh, Fortress Res Defense on her. Uh, but I think this is going to be just infinitely better because not only do you get the five defense uh, for being close to people, but you also get uh, the, in the ability to not be affected by um, any sort of debuffs and they just turn into buffs. Um, so that's pretty insane. As well as like now you can just stack up her res pretty high. Does she have any flowers? No, she doesn't. You can stack up her res pretty high because now this thing is pretty ridiculous. Uh, it's only good against distant units, so you know two range units. So you know um, regular sort of close range units aren't that big a deal. Uh, but a lot of times, you know, your main her her main purpose is going to be to sit there and just like soak up uh, distant units, right? Uh, two range units, bait them in. Uh, but basically, for those of you who don't know, this used to only do damage based on how much damage she gets hit by. But now it's just basically um, not only it got 10% more reduction, so that's pretty cool. I mean, you know, makes her a lot more tanky, so that's you know, it's always a good thing. Uh, but also, after she hits when she counterattacks, she'll have 40% of her res turned into into damage. So if we take if we pretend her res is 40, 10% of 40 is four, right? Uh, 10%, so 40%, we multiply that 4 by 4 is 16 damage, uh, just, you know, for free on her counterattacks. Uh, not like the, the biggest thing in the world, but it's actually, you know, it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good anyway. Um, and you could probably, you might be able to hit, like, 50, uh, 50 res. I don't know if that's such a good idea to, to be investing so much into res, but, uh, you can do that if you'd like. Uh, but I think 40 res is a good number to hit without spending too many resources. I mean, like I said, I'm not gonna go, go around plus 10 uh, my Fjorm. Um, but the fact that Ice Mirror now just does a flat, you know, damage boost is pretty good. Uh, what was the other thing I wanted to mention? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's come down here. Another person who got a pretty good... Oh, that, I guess before we go there. One of the things I find very interesting about Fjorm and Ike was I was expecting them to get a, a weapon refine at some point, but, uh, we got this instead. So we got a special refine for both of them because he has Radiant Aether and I ha actually... Well, I'll show him right now. Uh, and then they also just got a free premium skill, like something on them got upgraded, or, or they just got... Well, in, in terms of her, she had attack defense bond and then just got upgraded. Uh, in terms of uh, Ike, he just got he just got it, like, one through, you know, one through four. They just added it into his kit. Um, but I, I found that interesting that, like, you know, she's, she's pretty good now. I think she, she's getting going to get pushed back into the meta a little bit uh, because of this refine and because of this. Um, but the the thing I'm kind of alluding to here is that she might be a pretty good investment um, because she still doesn't have a weapon refine, which means that in some point in the future when they when they want to come back to her, I feel like they're just going to give her a weapon refine right on top of everything else. Um, so if you want to get a plus ten fjorm, you know, I think it's a pretty safe investment. Though you know, take that with a grain of salt, assault because I'm not going to invest in a plus ten fjorm because I'm not. Uh, I don't care too much about it, basically, is, I guess the point is. Um, especially because, for one, her, her scoring, I mean, she's going to be useful in Aether Raids at some points. Like, she comes out in the rotation sometimes. But mainly, if you were going to use her, it's going to be for um, Arena, right? Where she can Water Bless everybody. And for some, sometimes she's the bonus unit, as well as just, like, having the Water Blessing for Arena. So if you want a consistent uh, unit there, I mean, she'd be pretty good. But like I said, I don't invest, I don't invest in Arena very much, so it's not like I, you know, I don't care too much about it. Um, but yeah, I think this is pretty interesting to think about, uh, you know, I, I, I'm curious to see if and when she gets a, um, weapon refine, we still haven't gotten any, uh, distant counter refines, which is pretty interesting, um, that they're putting, like, uh, when I heard that they were getting buffed or something, when they were, when I heard they were getting extra stuff now, uh, I just figured it would be a weapon refine, but the fact that they put that off is, is pretty strange to me, especially because, um, like, if we look at, uh, what's his name, where is he, if we look at him, like, Look at this weapon. This weapon is ridiculous. Not only do you get distant counter, but it's got all this, like, for one, you can't affect him with debuffs anymore. Like, that's dumb, right? Uh, but not only that, he also flips the debuffs and gives himself, you know, just a bunch of stats for no reason, right? Um, so that's got, like, two effects already in one, plus, a, like, a, you know, full stat increase. Uh, and then, you know, here, uh, conversely, here we have Ragnell, and it just does nothing but sit there and counterattacks. Um, even like, even some of the earlier ones, what are some of the early, um, like early, really strong distant counter weapons, right? Like she has, she has the same thing, but she has doubling, right? 
regardless of phase, right? One of the Sothis was one of the earlier, like, you know, one of the earlier power creep distant counter weapons, right? So she has not only does she have this, right? She so she's no longer uh, dragon effective weak, uh, but she also has adaptive damage to distant counter units, and then she has the distant counter, right? Um, but it's just like it's just really weird that they're so hesitant to give these people refines when we've seen you know demonstrably stronger um, weapons with this encounter built in already. Uh, and then you know, here, here you go for those of you who uh, wanted to, who were wondering about Ike. Uh, my Ike is not very built, uh, and I've never really summoned for him. I've summoned for other units, and then Ike has just always kind of popped up. Uh, so that's kind of why I have a plus you know plus five Ike. Uh, so yeah, so you know these are these kind of came with him. So Radiant Aether is what it got upgraded. So at start of turn one, he gains a uh, two. So if someone hits him once, uh, he has it charged and he counterattacks with it. So you know, I mean, I guess, I, that's it, right? Like, there's not a whole lot to what's going on here, especially like you, you do this and then this, and there you go, you're fine. Um, interestingly enough, the skill they gave him was the Drive Res, which is all right. Um, Basically, what this makes me feel is that, like, I should have saved him, like, not merged him up and just saved a bunch of copies of him, and then I'd have joint uh, joint drive res to give out to anybody who wanted it. Um, though, not that I would necessarily fodder him off, or I want to, but, you know, it's there. Uh, and I just kind of decided to give him uh, this plus this, gives him 10 more res, so he's at 33, uh, and then plus this is 37. So he's basically 37 and 37, though, for those of you who know anything about um, Ike... The stats are pretty meaningless. Uh, you know, 37 defense or 37 res mean nothing. Like, he's just going to get stomped out. Like, you know, probably just die to, like, a green uh, tome user or something like that. Um, yeah, so. Uh, but it was interesting that he got it. Again, like I said, this he got this, and then this was just kind of slapped on him and as well as uh, he didn't get a refine. So for those of you who want to invest in them, uh, though I, I do think Fjorm is, is a better choice than, than him, uh, for those of you who do want to, I feel like, you know, there, there's... They left. They, they gave us some pretty good boosts, uh, specifically to Fjorm, like I said. Uh, but they left uh, some some wiggle room for more improvements later, which I think is pretty cool. Um, who? Uh, oh, here he is. Or here she, here she is. Who I wanted to talk about? Uh, Nino actually got a pretty sick refine. Um, she now does twenty damage, twenty percent of her speed, uh, with no cap. Where before it was like difference of speed and blah blah blah, so on and so forth. Um, and it was capped at seven. But now, I mean, what, you can get 45, let's say. If I got her the boon, she'd have 45, and then you build her up properly. She'd have, a, like, what, 50, 52 speed? At 50 speed, 10% of that is already 10 damage. So you're already, you know, 3 over the cap. If you're running her with, like, a Swiss Barrel 3 and a Swiss Barrel 2 or something like that, you could probably hit, like, 60s. Um, what, 60? Yeah, 60s. Uh, maybe 65, you know. Theoretically, maybe high 70s if, uh, you know, <laughs> if all the stars align and and whatever happens happens uh you can you know pretend you, you can pretend like she hits 70 and at 70 she's hitting for 14 true damage uh and if she's at 70 speed uh she's doubling so that's 24 true damage uh just for uh you know as a nice how do you do um so yeah that's something to consider uh i think realistically we're, we're probably looking at closer to 60 speed on her if you're running her with uh plus 10 uh swiss barrel 3 and then like you know some more other speed stuff probably hitting somewhere like 60 maybe 65 uh, but 60 speed at 60 speed you're hitting for 12 damage and that's 24 in total which is pretty good um but yeah th th this is kind of i think i mentioned this when i was talking about uh where is he when i was talking about gangrel and a lot of people i think a lot of people have said the same thing when gangrel came out he does you know 20 percent of his uh res as true damage which is pretty good uh, but a lot of people said the same thing was like there's no cap on this and i think like an easy way to improve some units uh and I, and I specifically my mind went straight to nino because i've always kind of wanted nino to be good because uh, i just kind of like her as a flying unit and you know it'd be nice to have her on a, a flyer ball or something though uh hitting a plus 10 with her is probably gonna you know next to impossible though she's in the four star focus now so maybe um but yeah so you know hitting you know just like a lot of people were suggesting oh just take the cap off um i mean for one just taking the cap off would have been pretty good uh but now she deals more consistent damage so you'll know how much damage she'll deal going in because you know you'll know her speed or you'll build her speed in whatever way you want to um but yeah that's pretty good uh one of the things that feels kind of like a little cheaper is that she she'll do the same amount of damage to everyone whereas back then if we looked at the differences between stats so back then it was like the difference between stats uh let's go see oh actually i don't know if i can look at that anymore 
Yeah, so difference between stats. Uh, 70% of the difference, actually, never mind. Um, it would have been pretty interesting to see what a, uh, like, just straight up what the difference between stats is um, percentage wise for her, right? So, like, if she, if she had like 50 speed and she went up to like a tank who only had like 20 speed. That's a difference of 30, right? Now, do I am I saying we should, like, take all that 30 and give her true damage? Not necessarily, but, like, it'd be nice to see, like, units with lower speed than her get penalized more than units with higher speed. But the way uh, the way this is set up is that um, she just do does flat damage to everyone. So, you know, either way, it's good. I mean, I, I, like, this, I like this refine. If I had a plus 10, I'd be, like, celebrating like crazy, but uh, I don't, and it's a pretty far-off pipe dream at the moment. Um, what else? That's mainly it in terms of like what I find interesting. Um, what I found pretty cool was we got, uh, his banner came back. So I got a plus three now. Uh, and Patrine should be coming back tomorrow, which is pretty cool. Cause I'd have, I'll have a, uh, a plus three by tomorrow. And then now that I have the, the Shinnen came back, I can get his 1000 feathers and I can fodder her off the attack, the lull attack speed. And then, you know, she's another step closer to being uh, just as good as she should be. Uh, in other news, I also got enough Grails because of all the Grails that were giving us to just get a, another Brunya. So, Brunya's at a plus 9. Um, just got to get a few more Grails and she'll be a plus 10 and we're, we're solid there. Uh, this build is kind of it's kind of iffy. Um, I, I saw a, a Brunya build in Arena, which was pretty broken. Like, Well, not broken, but you know what I mean? Like, It was very strong. It had like close foil, low attack speed, and uh, I forgot what the... Something in the C slot. It might have been uh, solo attack... attack Attack defense solo just to patch up her defense stat a little more because uh, it is pretty lacking. Uh, but yeah, it was a pretty strong Brenya. Um, I couldn't kill it and we lost the battle because of it, so I had to start my, my chain again. But um, it's something that just catches you off guard, is, is the main point. Uh, but yeah, so Brenya is about to be completed, which is pretty exciting because then that means I can get working on, um, on Hana, uh, which she doesn't have the. Um, for one, and this is what, what I, I guess something to stress here to you guys. Um, it's important to realize not to uh, fodder off. Like, don't fodder things off. Like, a lot of people just got her and immediately foddered off, like, the, the spurn on her or whatever, and then went on about their business, even though they didn't have, like, a plus 10. A lot of people just plus 10 her immediately because they had that in, like, they had that, they had those grails uh, reserve. Um, but I didn't, and a lot of you probably don't, and a lot of you probably just, well, I mean, I don't mean to assume a lot of you, but, like, I think a lot of people probably just, like, start putting skills into her. But I think it's good to wait, and for this specific reason, right? Like, I don't think there was any other unit I would use Spurn on, but the fact that I waited means that that's an extra thousand feathers I can get out of her, right? Because she's at six thousand, and then you know I can farm some more HM with her, and then get her up to seven thousand, and then fodder her off. Um, now, of course, you can say the same thing of like, oh, well, then why don't you just hold on to her until we get you know eight thousand or whatever? Uh, but between the time it took them to go from six thousand to seven thousand was so long that I think you're you're solid, right? Um, by the time they boost it up to 8,000, you'll have other units to hit to HM farm and you might get multiples. You might get another Chris, right? Um, so I think now is a good time to, to just fodder, her off, uh, fill, um, to HM farm and then fodder her off and then, you know, be fine from there. Um, but that's just something I wanted to consider. I wanted to tell or, or, or add, um, to, to consideration is that, um, don't always just fodder off units right away, especially if you can't necessarily use them, right? Um, if you see here, I have enough to change Brunya's, uh, Brunya's, what's it called? Brunya's, um, stats, her traits to give her a speed trait, which I, was what I need. Um, but I haven't done it yet just cause you know, she's not, she's not finished yet and I won't be able to use her anyway. So may as well hold off on that. And maybe another unit comes out that I want to use that. So, you know, that's what it is. Um, that's just something to consider is like. Don't really, I mean, there's no point in giving people fodder. Like, I could give her Shinin's low attack speed, right, as soon as I get his 1,000 feathers. But there's really no reason to, because she's not going to be finished yet. And, you know, I'm not going to use her in any content until she's finished, because it's not really worth using her for that, right? Uh, so that's something to consider. Just kind of just hold off, you know, you know, don't pull the trigger so quickly. Um, and then just give it some time. Uh, I guess some, something to, more stuff to show off. Uh, thanks to, again, th thanks to this event and a few of uh, the, you know, I went to go do those uh, trials to get more feathers from your units or flowers from your units. Uh, and I finally got her to the plus 8. The plus 10 will only give her one more uh, defense and one more res, which aren't wholly, like, that useful. Again, you want her to be very aggressive, so it's okay that, um, you know, you're not putting these feathers. Uh, but like I mentioned in that video, uh, it's gonna it's kind of sad to look at her and, and know that she's, like, two, two flower levels away from being fully completed. Um, but, you know, it, it's something that you have to consider. Like, do you want to spend 
uh, 360 flowers for two stats to that you don't really need. Uh, or rather, would you rather use those flowers on someone else to get them to a, a more uh, respectable place? And honestly, I think I would just leave her like this. But I think uh, my like, I don't know, my desire to, to to just like finish her and not have to worry about any more stuff might overtake me, and I just you know end up spending those flowers on her, which you know it, it'll be what it'll be. But I just want to say basically this is the final form uh, of her. Um, she's not gonna get stronger than this though that those plus two flower levels aren't gonna do much to, to increase how effective she is uh, But yeah, so for now, she's pretty she's pretty darn strong um, What else there was one more thing I wanted to show off or, or talk about oh Yeah, and that's the next uh, tempest trial or not the, the next forma thing <laughs> is gonna be Minerva, which is kind of annoying because As you can see I already have a plus ten uh, young Minerva um, and now I just have to wait for fodder to come in, uh, which is why the, I need the wyvern flight. Um, but if I had held off a little bit on the plus 10, right, if I had, if I had a plus nine, uh, and the, the formal thing came out and I gave her all the skills I wanted on her, um, then I would just, you know, use my little formal soul or whatever, get her, give the plus nine to, you know, merge the plus nine into that formal unit. Uh, and then uh, there you go. That saves you 500 grails. Um, a lot of orbs that you're gonna have to spend to get the uh, you know all this all the stuff you want on her so the wyvern flight um, There's a bunch of I forgot what skills they give her I mean there's any skills you want on the a slot, but this is kind of her final form minus the wyvern flight um, But yeah, so you know the orbs in the wyvern flight and the, the the 500 grails is basically kind of makes up for You know what I would have lost anyways, but I think for one I I, I really despise that like the blue stars that you see, for those of you who, who know, like if you have a form, if you pick a formal soul and you, if you use your formal and you buy a formal soul, which I've never bought before, so, so I don't have an example to show you. Um, the stars will be blue when you look at them in your screen, and then when other people fight against them or look at them on your map or whatever, which she'll be on the front of my defense all the time because she's there, people will see those blue stars and they'll know that I use the formal soul on her. Um, and it, I don't know, somehow that kind of cheapens it for me. So I think, you know. I'm just gonna. I'm, I'm glad that I that I that I, I plus tend her sort of you know, I guess you know quote unquote the honest way right. Just just straight up used all my grails plus tend her and, and got all that done. So, um, like I said, partially I'm kind of sad that uh, that you know that unit came out and uh, you know, too late for me to, to use that and and maximize my profits. Uh, you know, maximize your profits and all that stuff and, and minimize your costs. Uh, but the other part of me is actually kind of relieved, or not relieved, but like isn't too hurt about it because it's like, you know, I'd rather show off the fact that I had a plus 10 and, and uh, I didn't need to use the formal soul on that. Plus it lets me use the formal soul on something more interesting later on. Um, I'm not sure how long I'm going to hold on to that. Uh, I just, so far, so if I were to go back through all the formal soul units we've gotten, so far I've not been interested in a single one of them. Like I, I really haven't cared at all. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's not a whole lot else to say. To, to there's not a whole lot of different ways to put it. Just there hasn't really been any interesting formal soul units to me. And I wonder if there will be, if there ever will be any interesting formal soul units. Um, but yeah, not to mention like I just hate playing formal souls. Like I just I get it over with, and I and then I'm just out of there. I just I hate playing that mode so much. Um, playing with units that are just poorly like a, a poor team composition usually. Uh, they usually give you. Uh, as well as like just dealing with the random RNG of like stuff that you can't control, like just getting jobbed constantly. Um, but yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, that's that. Uh, you know, in the general case, I tend to st stretch out videos very long, but I have a lot to say and, and I don't make a lot of videos very often, so kind of like to pack a lot of things in there. Um, but yeah, so I think here, like I said, uh, red is significantly uh, more valuable than green, so hopefully, no one's pulling on green unless, you know, you want a plus 10. Um, Alphonse, but uh, yeah, I think I mean I think it's all right. Um, Alphonse, it's always funny because Alphonse kind of reminds me of like the young, um, the young Alexander from Fate. For those of you who uh, know or play anything about Fate, uh, I don't know. He just he looks very trappy to me, and it looks very strange. Like I saw him, and I was like, whoa, what the what's going on here? Uh, but yeah, he kind of reminds me of that young Alexander. Um, so he just kind of not something I really want in my barracks at all. Uh, and this guy, you know, I really don't care. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't care about his character, I don't care about his set or anything like that. Uh, but these two are, are genuinely very good, so hopefully uh, if you wanted any of them, you guys pulled them. Uh, and for those of you who wanted anything from here, you guys got to pull it here. Um, 
I think Acarus made a video some time ago. I'm not entirely sure when, but I think he made a video talking about um, Hero Fest and kind of like waiting to pull the trigger on it because Hero Fests have been pretty baity a lot of times where it's like, look, here's the Hero Fest, you know, pull for some stuff or whatever. And it's usually been followed up by something very powerful uh, going further. Um, and I guess as a closing thing, um, for those of you, like I said, I have the plus 10 uh, Byleth, so I guess the question is, what's my next, like, pay-to-win unit that I want to pull, try to, that I want to try to get plus 10 as, a, as an F2 play, uh, free-to-play or relatively free-to-play unit, uh, relatively free-to-play uh, player? Um, I think the next unit I want to work towards is probably like a plus 10 Corrin, uh, Legendary Corrin. Because uh, Legendary Corrin with the shield wall, I think I remember them saying... Not entirely sure. I think it's like 68% or something like that. Because you don't add them, right? Because Negating Fang gives you a 30% reduction. And then if you run Shield Wall on her, which I really kind of want to run Shield Wall, um, is another is is 40 from there. Possibly 40 from there, right? Not not guaranteed, but possibly 40 from there. Uh, if they're both at, like, you know, Negating Fang's always 30. You don't add them, right? It's not, uh, no, I think it's, I have to. I should do the math. Um, but I forgot. Well, I had done the math, and then someone else did the math, and I was like, okay, that's what that is. I think it's forty-eight. I'm not too sure though. So if we do a ten, and we reduce that by three, and then uh, reduce that by so seven, and then reduce that by four, we're reducing it by um, point four is twenty-eight. So two point eight. So seven is five. Uh, minus eight is four point two. So we should be we, we took four. We we're left with four point two damage if someone hits us for ten, which means we took away five point eight damage. So we're reducing damage by fifty eight percent, something like that. Um, it's probably closer to. It's probably a little less than that. That feels a little high. This is it transitive. I'm not entirely sure. I'm doing math on a YouTube video. This is what happens when you make uh, videos very late. Um, if we do it the other way, so if we do. 10 minus 40% gets you 6 damage, minus 30% of that uh, is 1.8. So 6 minus 1.8 is 5, 4.2. So no matter what, it's 4.2 damage after you get both of them, if they're max. So yeah, you get 58% damage reduction. Um, so not additive. So they're not, they don't, they don't equal to 70%, but that's still pretty high. 58% is almost close to 60. So that's definitely over 50% damage reduction. Um, so anyway, that's a long story short just to say that... Um, I think she's going to be very strong if you plus 10 her with the shield wall. And that's something that I, I really would like to um, to achieve. Uh, because basically it was between that, uh, Bector, and maybe Fjorm. Um, but I think the fact that she's like, for one, she's, she's such a huge stat ball. As well as like she can secure kills really easily with Negating Fang. Um, and, you know, basically with 58% damage reduction, you're kind of like almost negating her dragon effectiveness. As well as like... Now she doesn't have any weaknesses because, you know, you can't kill her with dragon effectiveness, theoretically, anyway. Um, and then you can't, um, you can't kill her with, uh, like, the, you know, she's not a, she's not an armor, she's not a cav, you know. There's no, the only effective thing against uh, infantry units is like a poison dagger, but no one's running that. Um, so unless we start getting, you know, infantry effective weapons, then, you know, there we go. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of what I want to run on her is uh, a shield wall with negating fang and then just have her be, like, unstoppable. But... Will I ever get to the point where I get a thousand orbs to be able to do that? Probably not anymore, but, um, you know, never say never, I guess. Uh, I'm already close to 300 after this celebration. I haven't spent any orbs. Um, but I guess if I save, like, for a year, then that, that'd be possible. Um, and then lastly, um, I don't imagine... I mean, there's probably never going to be a banner she comes out on where it's like, I'm going to pull, I'm going to summon all my orbs on her because even on like on legendary banners which is probably i think that's the only way to get her honestly uh on legendary banners um, unless she comes out on a hero fest one day uh, on legendary banners th those rates are really quite low so i'm probably never gonna pull for that unless it's like i need to pull on that colorless and it's like oh there's there's air um her i think and i think funnily enough that was the last one of the last banners passed and it was air and legendary corin and i didn't pull i forgot who the third one was but that was one of the banners. I didn't have orbs at the time. But I think going forward, if I ever see like Air and and Corrin on the same uh, banner, 
then I might just pull on that banner because that's a pretty high percentage to, to not only get uh, mythic merges for light season as well as um, just incru inc improving air's uh, utility overall in general is pretty good. Um, and then whatever other colorless unit hopefully is not too bad, but yeah. So uh, I've rambled on long, long enough. Uh, this was supposed to be just a, a short summoning video, but here we are uh, as usual. Um, hopefully you guys, you know, get some decent luck out there. Uh, get whatever unit you want from this, even though there's not a whole lot of good units on here. Um, and hopefully you get, you know, whatever you want from here. Um, Ruptured Sky, I'm never going to complain about Ruptured Sky, though. That's, that's, an, that's an amazing special, and, you know, the more units you can get that on, the better, right? So, yeah, uh, good luck on you guys out there, and hopefully you guys are enjoying this um, for, for your anniversary, and uh, hopefully it's not too disappointing for, for some of you. Um, yeah, you know, good luck out there. <laughs>